There were a lot of very physical things that I went through as a teenager. I started off with obsessive compulsive disorder. I was then diagnosed as a very young teenager with anorexia and bulimia. I then had self-harm problems and depression and anxiety and I had so many mental health diagnoses that for me my use of drugs and alcohol was the most normal thing in my life. I started drinking when I was about 11 or 12 and alcohol continued to be the primary problem until um, I was about 14 um, and I was prescribed um, Valium. Valium and prescription meds suddenly became my new favourite thing. This was three years ago. My family were away and I'd taken an overdose and was sent into hospital. I didn't want to live, to be honest. So I pulled these heart monitors off, unplugged a drip, and walked out of this hospital and went back home. Within 24 hours, I was in a psychiatric ward. I was very young and I hung around with people who were a lot older than me doing drugs. I knew that it wasn't just recreational. I knew I was escaping from a lot of stuff. When I was five, my dad left. I grew up very quickly at five to sort of be there for my brothers and sisters. And uh, then, you know, my mum met somebody and uh, I then was abused from the age of uh, six or seven to when I was 10. My main issues were actually a thing called MCAT and uh, I would, went down to five stone. That happened very quickly and um, I had paranoia and crack was an issue, a big issue as well. When you smoke crack it's like you embody that stereotype of what a crackhead is so quickly that you feel so low about yourself. I realised I can't live in the world without it. I'd got put in hospital for burning holes in my stomach and the doctor looked at me and then turned at my dad and said, if you let her carry on, she's going to die, I'll give her a couple of months. I just saw his face and I just thought, I can't put that on somebody. And I realised I have been putting that on somebody for so many years, I've been putting it on everybody. When I was a year clean and sober, I started working with the Amy Winehouse Foundation Resilience Programme and we went into schools and ran live shares and workshops. We don't just go into school once. It starts off with a teacher session, and then someone goes in and shares their experience with the parents. And then we meet the kids in an assembly, and then we return a bit later to run a workshop. The sort of Amy Winehouse Foundation becomes a face in a school for, for a year. My mum just doesn't have any time for talking. So someone coming outside the school, it's easier. You have someone to rely on. It did help me personally a lot to have someone who had the previous experience with drug usage. I've lost people because of it, so it's quite bad that I didn't know what to do and like who to talk to. Then I feel better about myself knowing that people are there and who I can go to. It's just made my life a lot better, to be honest. I thought that my personal story and my personal life was like something to hide away and it was shameful and it was embarrassing. And for that to be the thing that actually helps people is amazing for me because it helps me gain some form of like peace and acceptance around my teenage years. Back then it was I really wanted to die and I'd be really upset if I lived. I can genuinely say today that I really want to live and I'd be really upset if I died. Everything that the Amy Jar programme offer has helped me in some way because it's not just about your musical ability there, that it's all about building you up as a person. Blew all your troubles away. And now I've actually written my first song. It sounds like it's um, about the ending of a relationship about with a, with, a, with a person, but I believe that uh, when you are a crack addict, you're in a relationship with that thing. Did you ever feel Everybody has had their individual journey and nobody gets lost because it was the support that came with it and the sort of push in the right direction wherever you need it. I think when I was growing up, Amy Winehouse was such a, a big figure that we all knew about and so to be able to go into schools and represent her is massive. 
I'd be in the booth and I would think to myself, this is where she, you know, recorded some of her amazing tracks. There is a sense of me feeling proud. I feel like I'm representing something that's really important. So the Resilience Programme now reaches 10 different areas of England um, and has spoken to sort of 60,000 kids. I just hope that the programme is able to grow even further and reach even more. I think it's so important for people to support things like Amy's Yard because it is one of a kind. It really has focused on, you know, young people who are facing whatever they're facing. Something that was always said to me in recovery was like, let us love you until you learn to love yourself. And I think that that would be my message to people is like, let others love you until you can learn to love yourself. Mm -hmm.